Fantastic Gaming The channel where Logan will show you everything From gameplay to gear, their crew is here To take you on a journey through every atmosphere Releases to news, you don't have to choose Red Fantastic Gaming is here for you Hey everybody, Logan here. Today I'm going over a topic that hmm, I don't know if anybody ever really thought about, well at least not today, but in the past. We remember there were two big video game stores. We had GameStop, EB Games. You always had your choice to go to one or the other, now you really don't. After GameStop bought out uh, EB, you really didn't have a choice. Personally, I'm going to give you my opinion and why I think EB was better than GameStop. And um, I would really like to, you know, hear what your opinions were and your experiences and which one you think was better. Personally, this is coming from someone who shopped at both and worked at both. Originally, I was just mainly a GameStop shopper because I went to Babbage's quite a bit. Um, back in the day in the mall that's near my house we had Babbage's and we had e Electronics Boutique which we all know became EB Games a shortened and whatnot but whenever I went into EB Games it just felt the the weird colors the brightness it felt more like a toy store then when I went into Babbage's I was like wow computers and video games it was all clean and it had the white and the red and um, I felt the I, I don't know even looking at the price stickers felt a little I, I, I guess you could say higher class back then uh, GameStop well Babbage's was where I bought magic cards I bought some of my first magic cards there I bought N64 Super Nintendo games I bought my first copy of Hexen I got spawn and uh, for the Super Nintendo and Art of Fighting. Got a number of games there. Got my original PlayStation there. I actually went in to get a Sega Saturn and the guy there talked me into getting a, play, getting a PlayStation. In retrospect, I don't know, that could have gone one or two ways. I could have had a very uh, expensive collection at this point, but you know, I played a lot of great games on the original PlayStation, so. But shopping there I don't know, every time I went into an EB or electronics boutique, it just felt a little more crowded uh, in terms of space. I didn't really like the yellow stickers. There was something about that yellow color that really bothered me. And I bet you're at this point, I was like, you're thinking to yourself, didn't you say you liked EB better? We'll get to that. Once I got uh, a little older and I started working at GameStop, I noticed, you know, um, when you first, well, when I first started working there was 2001, and it was really cool. It was really laid back, and then once they started doing those, uh, you have to get these pre-orders. You have to get these reservations, otherwise your job's on the line. That sucked. Um, our prices were higher because we were at an uh, EB competitive store. No, ours were higher because we weren't competing with an EB. So, I didn't realize that that was a thing until once I started working there, that GameStop's prices were always higher than EB if there was no EB to compete with. So, ones in the mall, EB had lower prices than GameStop, and that was okay. Um, because GameStop would match them, or they would, I guess they had some kind of insider and they had a way to match their prices, or they would go in, I don't know what they would do. But they would, EB was always cheaper when it came to pre-owned games for the most part GameStop like again the I worked at a strip mall there was no EB near us so our prices were higher instead of uh, where where games would come out at, at 49 we'd sell them for 44 for pre-owned where the ones in the mall would sell them for 39 stuff like that or, or 42 it'd be cheaper because EB's prices were cheaper so when I left GameStop in 2005, I started working for EB after that um, because a number of us ex 
GameStop employees got picked up by EB. This was right before uh, GameStop acquired EB. And talk about a breath of fresh air. There was no forced selling those edge cards or pre-orders. They wanted them, yeah, because they helped. But it was more like take care of the customer and keep them repeat, keep them coming back in with a good um, experience. So working there, it was much better. And then once GameStop acquired EB, it just kind of went downhill. They implemented the two systems, they put them together, and then the management, the district and everything combined, and then it just, it, it really went downhill after that. I, I, I left um, for a better job. <sighs> for a better job, we'll just say that at the time, at another big box retail. So that, from my personal experience, I, I have a number of horror stories and a lot of great stories working at uh, at GameStop. I don't have any horror stories at EB. Um, I will say I had more managers. My managers backed me at, uh, at EB. They supported me because they knew my qualifications. I had a couple managers who were just looking out for themselves when I was at GameStop. They didn't really care about the employees. They just cared about the money in their pockets, very corporate-esque. So, but for example, uh, I worked at, uh, uh, I'll give you a good one about EB. I worked at EB in Hialeah. If you guys know, it's South Florida. It's predominantly Hispanic. I'm not Hispanic, as you guys know, I'm Irish. Um, but I I was the, I was an assistant manager there. And I, uh, I opened up the store one morning and I had this lady come to the door and I guess she was waiting for me and I open up the door and she starts talking to me in Spanish and I'm like I'm sorry ma'am I don't speak Spanish and she just starts going off and going off I'm like I'm, I'm sorry ma'am I don't understand and she just starts going off and yelling at me I'm like and it, it, if, if you've ever been in that situation you just don't know what to do and I'm just like just like that I, I was just like that and um she stormed off. I was like, okay. Didn't think much of it. Um, went on with the rest of the day. There's a lot of Hispanic uh, only speakers in, in that store. And I had associates that worked with me that spoke Spanish, so they didn't really care. My store manager thought I was the freaking bee's knees. I, I had the most knowledge he's ever met. And we got along. His name was Marco. Really good guy. Um, he was... Uh, I was in my 20s. He was in his 40s. Really good guy. Really good guy. And later on, went to open up his own uh, LAN and video game store. So on and so forth. But uh, the next day, uh, I come into work and he talks to me. He's like, did you have a customer that was upset with you? I was like, yeah. Why? Because of, uh, I, I told him the story. He's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, she came back. She yelled at me. It's like, I'm, I'm sorry. He's like, no, don't. I told her to leave my store. I was like, what? He's like, yeah. He's he. Marcos was Cuban and Mexican. He was half Cuban, half Mexican. And the the lady comes in, starts yelling at him, how and tells him how dare he hire someone that's uh, not Hispanic or doesn't speak Spanish. This is highly. And he goes, excuse you. This is America. How dare you come in here and expect someone to cater to you? And he's telling her all this in Spanish, and I'm just sitting back like... And as he's telling me the story, and he's like, he is my best employee. He is the best in this store. He is, you know, the the top of what we have. And if you have a problem, you can leave. We don't need you here. I need him here. And I was, I was flabbergasted. And to have a manager stick up for me like that, you know... I, I didn't mean to upset anybody or piss anybody off, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I was just trying to be nice and I, I was shocked and this man, or I like, I had a lot of respect for this guy a lot and then it just shattered through the roof after that. Um, never had a manager stick up for me like that at any other retailer. Now I did have some great management at uh, GameStop, a guy by the name of Sean, he was a former Marine. Uh, my friend and I, um, Dan, who were working at the GameStop at the time, they, they told us a former Marine's coming in to become our new boss, and we were just like, oh, greatest guy in the world. <laughs> I mean, 
whoa, the fun we had. We, I, it was great time working. I had a lot of great uh, bosses, but I had some pretty bad ones. I had uh, a manager at GameStop. I, I can't remember his name at this moment. For some reason, it, it escapes me. But every day I would open, and he would close or be. A, no, he would open and I'd close, there'd be a register shortage. And he'd try to blame me for it, but he would do it for a third key and whatnot at the same time. Uh, sorry, I was a third key and assistant manager, but more often me. And I was like, okay, I can't do this. And then I found out he was making me, he was making me pay it back. He was actually making other associates pay it back too, out of their pocket. So I was like, okay, once I realized this was a thing, I called HR. They come and did an investigation. One day I come into the store. They, I, I'm not sure everything they did. I'm pretty sure they talked to the other employees. I later found out that they talked to some of us, like personally called them. And um, I come into the store for my shift and I see loss prevention head. I see our district manager there. And I'm like, what's going on? And then my district manager hands me the keys. He's like, you're gonna close up tonight. I was like, okay. I wasn't supposed to, I think I was working a mid shift or something like that. And I was like, no, no problem. So, and he hands me his keys and I didn't think much of it. And I'm like, okay. He's like, put these in the safe. So I put them in the safe. Um, no, he'd hold on to them and Ted said, put them in the safe later. That's what he told me to do. And uh, I was like, okay. So in about maybe 30 minutes later, the manager comes out with uh, loss prevention and uh, our district manager, uh, his name was Bob, <laughs> he's a funny guy, uh, <laughs> funny guy, um, and they come out and his name was Tim, his name was Tim, the manager's name was Tim, and he shakes my hand and he goes, it's been nice working with you, and then he just walks out, and I'm like, what just happened? And our head of uh, loss prevention at the time, she goes, well, yeah. So we checked some tapes. We talked to him, did this, did that. And apparently they had just enough to fire him for doing that. Because apparently if there's a red shortage, you can't make your employees pay back. You have to report it. And he wasn't reporting it. So that was fraud. So that they were able to get him. And then they ended up asking us how much we... Uh, had to pay out of our own pockets and I was I said I, I couldn't tell you right off the top I was probably around 20 bucks each of us were sitting around 20 something and then GameStop actually paid us back for that happening so that was that was a really interesting time but as an employee Game, GameStop has had its ups and downs my last tenure um, I had uh, a, a pretty good run I was there for four months in 2018 before uh, our personal business took off. And it, it was just, I, I couldn't run my own business and still work there at the same time. But I had a really great manager there. He was awesome. Uh, he, he was much younger than I was, but really good guy. Uh, his name was DeAndre, awesome guy. So uh, yeah, I, I worked with some good people that time. And uh, my district manager uh, at that time was awesome too. He still worked there, great guy. Um, so GameStop overall back in the day has gone through its ups and downs. EB, I've never had any downs with EB. So that's why I would say even as um, an employee and a customer of GameStop and EB, I, I think EB was a little better, but it's really unfair because I have like so many years of GameStop experience and so little with EB, but what little I did have was was all positive so well no no mm, I, I you know there was a reason I quit EB but no the reason I quit EB was a GameStop reason because they had already taken over so that was the reason it didn't have anything to do with EB so there you go but that's from a customer perspective and employee perspective why I think EB was a bit better if if GameStop decides to pull themselves back right now and look at what made them successful back then and focus more on that, I think 
the company could be much better, be more like uh, EB was, be more like early GameStop slash Babbage's was. I think things could be a lot better. I still shop at GameStop, still have a lot of friends that work there. I'm not going to say anything bad about the company because I don't think, yeah, every major company has its iffy business practices, but that's not for me to say. I'm not that kind of channel. I'm not here for that. But I will say I do miss EB games. I miss those days, but I also miss the days when not everything was digital. But that's a whole another can of worms. Thank you guys for watching this little opinion piece, this little perspective piece, if you uh, if you may. But uh, yeah, make sure head on over to our socials, Facebook and Instagram, at Red Bandana Gaming. Head on over to the website, RedBandanaGaming.com, for all your latest goodness. I might write an article about this about my feelings on it, but. Um, uh, and Twitter at RBG underscore retro. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down there if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? Thank you guys for watching. Like we always say, be legendary. Thanks again.